guys, BB Gun here. I've got another Sims 4 build for you today. This build took me about 3 hours to complete, but I've sped it up for you into a 15 minute speed build. Since my last video, I did get the Cats and Dogs expansion pack, so this house is in the town of Brittleton Bay. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten the chance to actually play the expansion pack yet, so I'm really looking forward to playing it on stream sometime soon. Speaking of which, don't forget that you can catch live streams of Sims 4 and other games over on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash bbgun. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at bbgun615. I'll put links down in the description below. Also, if you enjoy this content, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Be sure to ring the bell for notifications when I post a new video. So for this build, I wanted to make a modern getaway for either a single person or a couple with a dog but no children. I really wanted the house just to be a small and cozy space for someone to relax in and enjoy some solitude, which is why I picked this specific lot. It's set back from the hustle and bustle of the town and has some lovely landscaping all around it. Maybe this house would end up on some sort of house sharing site for vacation getaways. Who knows? It's possible. Firstly, I started off figuring out the floor plan that I wanted, which was one bedroom, one bathroom, and a great room with a combined kitchen and living space. I ended up adding a sunroom instead of a back porch as well, which you'll see a little bit later. Then I moved on to the roof. I love the look of monoslope roofs, but this one proved to be a little bit tricky because I know that the valley gutter that I created in the middle isn't ideal from a roofer's viewpoint. I ended up going with it anyway though because I just really liked how it looked in the end. I decided to go with a dual toned exterior, for lack of a better phrase, with dark shingles on the top and blue horizontal siding on the bottom portions of the walls. I really liked how this turned out in the end with the variations in textiles and colors. I wanted to be sure that this little house would get enough sunlight, so I picked a front door that matched the French doors I wanted leading onto the back porch. This way all exterior doors had glass panes to let in more light. I decided to use the tall windows with dark shutters because even though I wanted this house to be more modern looking, I love mixing the old and the new. So I thought that the very modern roof was enough to make the house as a whole feel modern even though I brought in some transitional building elements as well. This is my first sunroom I've done in The Sims, so I was excited to give it a try. I'm pleased with how it turned out, even though it's small, it's not too small. There's still plenty of space for a few people to sit out there and enjoy their morning coffee while reading a book. Placing the windows proved to be a little bit tricky. Since I decided to use the windows with shutters, I really wanted the window on the back of the house to be centered on the wall. I knew this was going to be the bedroom and that the window would just look better centered, both from the inside and from the outside of the house. Even though I chose a different window initially so that it could be centered, it bugged me that only the one window in the bedroom was different. Later on, I ended up extending that side of the house by one square, which made it possible for me to replace the window with one that matched the rest and be able to center it. I was really happy once I made that change. It's the small things that really make a build better and in my opinion, that was one of those things. Now that the exterior of the house is complete, we get to decorate the inside of the house. Yay! I started off with the kitchen layout. I knew that I had to keep the kitchen small, so I decided to go with a modern take on the galley kitchen and make one side an island. If you recall from my last build, I didn't know too much about how the kitchen cabinets worked. I didn't know that you could turn off the auto cabinets and have a ton more freedom with your layout. I was so glad that I actually looked that up for this build because I love the glass overhead cabinet that I found for it. It has built-in clutter. I love it. It's no secret that I love the color blue. So I went with some blue cabinets for the island and accented it with dark gray cabinets on the back wall. I tied in the color of the island to the back wall by making the overhead cabinet the same blue. I think it turned out great in the end and is very functional for such a small space. Since this is a small build, I knew I didn't have the room for a dining table. That's another benefit of making the one side of the kitchen an island. I just put some bar stools at the island and voila, we have a dining space. Now I know it's not a practical dining space for a family or anything, but remember, this house is meant either for a single person or a couple and a dog. So it's really plenty of space and helps keep the overall blueprint of the house smaller.
I put a double bed in the bedroom so that it could accommodate either one or two persons. I also put a dog bed in there at the beginning, but I ended up having to take the dog bed out to fit a dresser later on. I decided that I wanted the bedroom to be warmer colors since the rest of the house was cool colors. So I picked a wood frame bed to bring in some texture and a bedspread with orange in it. I wanted the bedroom to be a comfortable, relaxing space, and I feel like I accomplished that with the furniture that I picked. I kept the bathroom simple and functional because I was very limited on space. I didn't want to make the house any larger though just to have an elaborate bathroom. So I ended up putting a tub shower combo, a modern sink, again I brought in some warmth with the natural wood, and a toilet. Simple, but effective. Next I had to sort out the living space. This is when I really realized just how small this house was. It was near impossible to figure out a layout that I liked. I ended up placing a love seat, really an oversized chair it looks like, as a couch. I hope that two sims could fit on this together and watch TV or chat. I do love the TV stand though. It has mixtures of three different textiles, metal, wood, and glass. I think this set is really neat looking and helped me achieve the overall look I had envisioned for this house. I put the matching sofa table behind the couch so that when you walk in the front door it sort of acts like a divider between the foyer and the living room. Once I get the basic layouts done, then I start to go through the decorations and put some clutter, paintings, pictures, and other objects around the house. Now, since I'm still new to The Sims 4, and I haven't played it a ton, I don't know all the decorations in the base game even, never mind all the new decorations that I got with the Cats and Dogs expansion pack. This was the first time I was seeing a lot of these decorations, so it took me a little while to sort through them and I kept getting distracted because I'd be looking for something to place in the living room, for instance but see an object in the options that I wanted to place in the bedroom, again, for instance. So you'll see a lot of jumping back and forth between rooms. I don't know if this will ever really change, I don't really notice it too much when I'm actually working on the build. I also needed to paint the walls still. I wanted to wait until I had decorated some so that I picked the wall color based on furniture that I really liked, instead of trying to do it the other way around. I thought the gradient wall was really neat so I put that in the bathroom. I ended up finding a really warm and cozy orange color for the bedroom, which was perfect, it was exactly what I had hoped for. And then for the living room slash kitchen areas, I went with a dark blue accent wall and light grey for the rest of the walls. I love dark colors, but since this house is so small, I felt that the majority of the living space should be light colors to make the room feel larger. I set up the sunroom with a bench and a small table. In my mind, an ideal sunroom is a space to wake up in the morning, grab a cup of coffee, and go sit and enjoy chatting with your partner or reading a book. So that's exactly what I set the sunroom up for. I ended up putting a small lamp on the table to really make it a good reading spot. I tried messing around with this red shelf that I see a lot of other people use to help put clutter wherever you want. I had some issues with it though, so I still need to go through and really figure out how to use that to its full extent. It was really difficult to fit a dresser in the bedroom. I feel like a better option would be some drawers under the bed frame or something. But I made it work with turning move objects on. Since I used a lot of dark wood and dark colors throughout the house, I figured a lighter colored wood floor would be the best. I generally love dark floors though. So I had some trouble finding one that I liked that was a lighter color. That is, until I came across the hickory wood floor. It has so much character in the wood grains, it might be the first light colored wood floor that I like. I tried to use as many decorations, furniture pieces, etc. that I could from the Cats and Dogs expansion pack. However, I didn't limit myself to just using those items. I may do that in future builds. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see builds that are done only with items from that expansion pack. That is, as long as the expansion pack has one of the items that I need. For instance, if a pack doesn't come with new kitchen cabinets, then I would use kitchen cabinets from the base game at least. I'm going to fast forward through some of the decoration phase, so enjoy this background music in the meantime.
Now we're going to move outside and do some landscaping. I wanted to create a lush, colorful landscape at the entrance to the house that really sets the tone for the rest of the house as a relaxing getaway from everyday life. You may have noticed throughout the video, but since my last build, I did look up how to resize objects in the game, which is a really good thing to learn. I used it a lot throughout this build, especially with the landscaping. You can see here how I played around with the sizes of the plants and rocks until I found a combination of sizes that I liked. Now, I'm not the greatest at landscaping, so I just kind of moved them around, overlapped plants, until I came up with a general idea of what I liked. I placed some smaller plants at the front that I did not use in the rest of the landscaping, and that was on purpose. I wanted the majority of it to be repetitive, simple, colorful, and then at the very front of the house I just wanted to have a little extra pop of different colors, which is where you see the purple and that like bluish green succulent looking plant. I think it looks really good. I love all the rocks that I placed throughout it as well. It really adds a little more character to it. And then of course I had to go back later because I forgot at first to paint the terrain different than just grass. But I remembered. And then in the backyard, I added a large birch tree because I love birch trees. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching my second YouTube video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I really appreciate you being here. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the build. Let me know if you have any suggestions for me or anything of the sort. Anything is appreciated. Don't forget to hit that like button. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell so that you'll get notifications when I post a new video. I'm hoping to get another Sims 4 build to you soon. I also might be posting some gameplay or highlight videos from my Twitch channel of other games that I play. That being said, don't forget, I do stream on Twitch. I have the link on the screen right now. Also, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at bbgun615, so go follow me on there for pictures and life updates. I have some screenshots of the house to show you now, so don't go anywhere. They're coming up right now. I, again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys later, alright? Have a good one. Bye.